So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this cool little time lapse hyper zoom transition inside of Adobe After Effects. So if you wanted to know how to do the first part of that shot, which is the hyperlapse, I'm not going to talk about it in this tutorial because I have made another tutorial about how to do hyperlapses in the past. So if you wanted to know how to do one, go and check that tutorial out. I'll link it above over here and down in the description. Uh, this one is just going to be talking about the hyper zoom transition. So for this hyper zoom transition, I had two time lapses of the London Eye, one at a very wide focal length, getting the whole scene at 70 millimeters, another one in a lot tighter into a particular part of the scene, which was this building, and that was at 200 millimeters. I shot both of them on the same camera and I just swapped out lenses in between. You can make your life a little bit quicker and easier if you wanted to use two cameras and two tripods and shoot them both at the same time but I only was able to take in one camera and one tripod uh, so I just swapped out lenses for me. So a couple of things to note when you're actually shooting the time lapses make sure you match the interval settings of both time lapses and also match as well as you can the exposures and the white balance that will save you a lot more headache in post. So once I had the two time lapses I jumped into After Effects and I'll show you how to do the hyper zoom transition inside of After Effects. First thing you want to do is go to File, Import, and find the photos that you've taken. Click the first photo, uh, make sure camera raw sequence is on, or if you shot JPEGs, camera JPEG sequence is selected here, and then just click Import. And the first thing it will do is come up with a camera raw window, which will allow you to do any color grading to the whole clip, but I usually just press OK at this point because I like to do my color correction or color grading at the end once I have done the effect. So just press OK and then you see you will have your clip there brought into the window. Uh, what you want to do is start a new composition. So you just go up here to composition, new composition, and here you can set your frame rate and resolution and I've just got it at a 4k resolution with the 25p frame rate I'm gonna go to 30 seconds for the duration of the clip once that's done your composition is set up and you can just bring in your time lapse here and as they are high resolution photos you want to just come down here to the bottom left in the transform tab and just scale down so that it fits into the frame so it's probably about 91 i think as it's brought in all the photos from the entire day into one clip i just need to go through and divide up the clip into the segments that i want so the wide shot and the tight shot so i'll just go through and do that now quickly okay so once you've got your two clips one thing I will say is I only actually got about two seconds of time-lapse footage here. I would say probably do a little bit more than that, depending on how quick obviously you want it to be in the video, but I probably should have got about four seconds here. Anyway, let's just go into here and rename them. So we've got wide and we've got the tight above it. So just rename them just so you always know where you are on the timeline. And basically you just want to line them both up. So if you go to the tight, scroll down, scale it down quite a bit and you just want to line it up on top so let's zoom in 200 percent bring the opacity down so that we can see where we are obviously that's too big so scale it down even more how's that look and just basically want to try and line the two clips up uh, i think scale is a bit too much so just play around with this until it matches as best as you can it doesn't have to be completely perfect because at that far a distance you probably won't be able to see the minute differences but anyway I'm just a bit OCD about these things so I'm just going to take a little bit more time just to see if I can match it getting really precise one other thing you can do is go up here to the effects and presets and search for power pin just to be able to stretch the clip into different positions if you feel like you've got the scale as best as you can matched up 
it might just be a case of having to stretch it in certain positions just because it's all to do with the fact that one was filmed on a very wide lens which is a bit more distorted and then the other is on a 7200 at 200 which has less distortion so and then yeah, obviously you can see that it's just completely not in the right color contrast um we'll probably have to feather this in a bit so the next thing we want to do is on the tight clip just go up to the mask properties and grab the pen tool and then just draw a kind of rough mask in the vicinity of the tight video clip then within the mask properties just feather that as much as you can go to about 200 and you'll just see that it's kind of blending that in a little bit more and it will just come to a case of adding lumetri color in as well and just playing around to try and correct the white balance i'm just going to leave it there for now you can go in and feather and play around with the color a little bit more if you wanted to just to make sure that it does match into the scene pretty well but for my purposes it looks okay here obviously the clouds are a bit different in the tighter shot because you can't control that but it doesn't look too out of place and like i say the clip will happen pretty quickly before you can even notice uh, the next stage is to join these two clips up together so they move in sync and there's two ways you can do that one is to create a 3d camera which will allow you independent of these two clips to go in and out and move the camera around into the scene um, another way is to go to layer new and select the null object bring that to the top and what you can do is just by selecting the tight and the wide press control on your keyboard select both and then take this little pick whip tool and parent it to the null object so that what that means is now that we these two clips are joined via this null object which means we can move the scale and position of just the null and it will move both of these two in sync with each other rather than having to go into each individual clip and play around with the transformer position and copy the same properties on to the next one you can just do it all in one which is here in this null and yeah from here all you want to do is just animate as you prefer so go in a few frames create a scale in position go in a few more frames depending on how quickly you want the zoom to actually be so you can go in maybe six seven or eight frames for example if you want a quick zoom and then zoom in using the scale and position values here so after that step this is essentially what we have it will zoom in but as you can see um, we've still got the we've still got the edges showing which are actually moving around a little bit because the tripod was wiggling around in the wind so either you can scale all the way in so that you just bypass all of this wide shot or another thing you can do is as it's zooming in and it gets almost to the end of the zoom you can animate the mask expansion and then yeah just go to the mask expansion click the stopwatch go one frame on and expand the mask all the way out so we don't see it anymore just adjust the position so that it fills up the whole frame and the scale scaling a little bit more and the last thing you want to do is just add motion blur to the tight and the wide which is just by clicking this but two buttons here adds motion blur if you don't see it go down here toggle switches and mode click both of those and one more thing that i always do is for the position and scale keyframes on the null object you can just select them all right click keyframe assistant easy ease and what that will do is just make sure that the scale and position eases in on either end so when it starts and when it finishes rather than just being a jerky abrupt motion so just have a slight ease in and to get that little wiggle effect just before it hit the tower i selected the position keyframes come over here to this graph editor and you should have something that looks like this if you don't it might be because you need to go down here 
and you might be on edit value graph and you have something that looks like that but you want to be on edit speed graph here's where you can really precisely control the velocity of the keyframe so you can for example start off really slow as demonstrated by the graph and then end up really quick by the end so the motion will start up really slow and move into the tower really quickly but yeah these sort of things are probably for another tutorial so i won't go too much into it now but yeah that's basically what i do and to get that little wiggle motion if we just go here and just all i pretty much did was just play around with the keyframes and just have it sort of go off to one side a little bit before it hit the tower just very slightly so about there and that's pretty much what it looked like when I did it and it just sort of goes off to one side and then comes in what I might do is actually just stretch these keyframes out because it is a bit too fast for me so take those two keyframes at the end stretch them out a bit more and also on the mask the two keyframes stretch those out make sure they line up and yeah that should be enough and yeah that's perfect for me the right speed and the right little wiggle at the end boom end result there you go i hope you enjoyed that little tutorial on how to do a time lapse hyper zoom transition and uh, if you did make sure you chuck it a like and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future and i shall see you next time take care